Hello and welcome back. This is Jonathan Gardner covering the theory of Python. And this video follows the previous video which talked about variables. And we're going to expand a little bit upon what Python objects are and how they behave. Okay? So in Python, every object has an ID. And this is a unique ID, but it's only unique as the object is alive. Okay? So it, Python will use the ID, so you can't rely on the ID being unique across the life cycle of a program. It's only unique as long as that object is alive. And you could obtain the ID of an object by calling the ID function on that object. It'll tell you what that object's ID number is. Given an object's ID number, you can't really do much with it. It's just useful for identifying objects and keeping them separate from one another. The other thing you can do with objects is you can see the type of the object using the type function, right? Every object has a type and the type doesn't change throughout the object's life. So you can't like convert an integer into a float. Well, integers and floats themselves are immutable, they never change. Speaking of which, let's talk about the value of an object. Some of them are simple, right? They have a single value. Some of them are complex. Okay, they have multiple values, like our complex numbers have a real part and an imaginary part. Um, some values are mutable, meaning you can change the values during the life cycle of the, the object. We haven't run into any object quite like that yet, but they do exist and we're going to cover them eventually. And most or some of them actually are also immutable, meaning they can't change. Okay, so this, all the objects that we've seen so far are immutable, except for one, they're simple. Uh, Python objects are created as needed. Okay, so typically they arise as a result of some expression. Um, there's not a lot of other cases where objects are created. Then the objects have a life cycle and then there's reference counting involved. And what Python does is it keeps track of every variable that references the object, any object that references the object as well. It, it, it increments that number every time there's a new reference, and when that reference is lost, it decrements that count. And then finally, uh, at the end of the life cycle, it is garbage collected. Keep in mind that you can't rely on Python doing the garbage collection when you think it'll happen. If there's some behavior you want to happen at some point in that object life cycle, you need to call out that behavior and tell it to do it. For instance, with files, uh, when you're done using a file, you, you should always close the file so that the disk can write it out, so that it can be written out to disk and the, the operations that need to finish can, can finish. So um, there's going to be a lot of help though with files. We're going to use the with statement to make that easy. But keep in mind the garbage collection happens sometime uh, after the last reference has been lost, okay? And Python also detects uh, cycles. What's a cycle? Well, if an object references an object and the other object references the first object, that's a cycle, okay? And cycles can be arbitrarily large. Python does a pretty good job of finding these cycles and eliminating them, okay? There's really not a lot to say about Python objects. Um, calling out the ID and type is important. Let's talk about the different types we've seen so far. So we've seen ints, integers, we've seen floats, we've seen complex numbers, we have seen strings, but only kind of in passing, like as a result of the bin, oct, or hex functions. We have also seen, um, oh, we've seen booleans. I haven't really talked about booleans yet. That's true and false. We'll talk more about that when we go to branching. And then we've also seen a none type, which sounds weird, but that's the type of the none object. I encourage you to use type to go through the different Python objects and see what their type is and get familiar with how the type system works. Guys, I know this was a short video, but I hope it was useful. Take care and bye-bye. This video was part of a series on the theory of Python. You can click on the left to see the playlist and on the right to support my channel. Thank you very much for your time.